The Life and Sad Ending of Gloria Swanson Gloria Josephine May Swanson was born on March 27, 1899, in Chicago, Illinois, the only child of Adelaide and Joseph Theodore Swanson, a soldier. She was destined to be, perhaps, one of the biggest stars of the silent movie era. Her personality and antics in private definitely made her a favorite with America's movie-going public. Swanson certainly didn't intend on going into show business. After her formal education in the Chicago school system and elsewhere, she began work in a department store as a sales clerk. In 1915, at the age of 18, she decided to go to a Chicago movie studio with an aunt to see how motion pictures were made. She was plucked out of the crowd because of her beauty to be included as a bit player in the film The Fable of Elvira and Farina and the Meal Ticket, 1915. In her next film, she was an extra also, when she appeared in At the End of a Perfect Day, 1915. After another uncredited role, Gloria got a more substantial role in Sweetie Goes to College, 1915. In 1916, she first appeared with her future husband, Wallace Beery. Once married, the two pulled up stakes in Chicago and moved to Los Angeles to the film colony of Hollywood. Once out west, Swanson continued her torrid pace in films. She seemed to be in hit after hit in such films as The Pullman Bride, 1917, Shifting Sands, 1918, and Don't Change Your Husband, 1919. By the time of the latter, Gloria had divorced Beery and was remarried, but was not to be her last marriage, as she collected a total of six husbands. By the middle 1920s, she was the highest paid actress in Hollywood. It had been said that Gloria made and spent over $8 million in the 20s alone. That, along with the seven marriages she had, kept the fans spellbound with her escapades for over 60 years. They couldn't get enough of her. Gloria was 30 when the sound revolution hit, and there was speculation as to whether she could adapt. She did. In 1928, she received an Oscar nomination for Best Actress for her role of Sadie Thompson in the film of the same name, but lost to Janet Gaynor for three different films. The following year, she again was nominated for the same award in The Trespasser, 1929. This time, she lost out to Norma Shearer in The Divorcee. By the 1930s, Gloria pared back her work with only four films during that time. She had taken a hiatus from work after 1934's Music in the Air and would not be seen again until Father Takes a Wife, 1941. That was to be it until 1950 when she starred in Sunset Boulevard, 1950, as Norma Desmond, opposite William Holden. She played a movie actress who was all but washed up. The movie was a box office smash and earned her a third Academy Award nomination as Best Actress, but she lost to Judy Holliday. The film is considered one of the best films in the history of film, and on June 16, 1998, was named one of the top 100 films of all time by the American Film Institute, placing 12th. After a few more films in the 1950s, Gloria more or less retired. Then, she appeared mostly on television. Swanson hosted The Gloria Swanson Hour, one of the first live television series in 1948, in which she invited friends and others to be guests. Swanson later hosted Crown Theater with Gloria Swanson, a television anthology series in which she occasionally acted. Throughout the 1960s, 1970s, and early 1980s, Swanson appeared on many different talk and variety shows, such as The Carol Burnett Show and The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson, to recollect on her movies and to lampoon them as well. On The Carol Burnett Show in 1973, Swanson reprised her impersonation of Charlie Chaplin from both Sunset Boulevard and Manhandled. She was the mystery guest on What's My Line. She acted in Behind the Locked Door on the Alfred Hitchcock Hour in 1964, and in the same year, she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for her performance in Burke's Law. She made a guest appearance on The Dick Cavett Show in the summer of 1970, a guest on the same show as Janis Joplin. She made a notable appearance in a 1966 episode of The Beverly Hillbillies, in which she played herself. Sadly, shortly after returning to New York from her home in the Portuguese Riviera, Swanson died in a New York hospital on April 4, 1983, from a heart ailment age 84. She was cremated and her ashes interred at the Episcopal Church of the Heavenly Rest on Fifth Avenue in New York City, attended by only a small circle of family.